Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody for being here because mounting a show and putting out food and not having people would just be like a tree falling in the woods and nobody hearing it. So, um, um, thank you for being here. You honor me by your presence today. I'm going to try and do this without getting choked up. Um, but I have all kinds of things I want to share and I have to just kind of like think about, okay, what's going to actually happen here. Um, the first thing, and Debbie Rogers is not here, would be just simply to thank FCTV for this amazing new space that they have. Um, you guys are involved, aren't you? Yeah. Or no? No? Um, Nicole and David, I know Nicole's been on um, many, had her own show actually here. Um, so this is very exciting and it's fun to be part of the premiere show. It's the first, first thing. So we had a little bit of craziness getting the show up, um, but it's been very fun and very exciting to be here. Um, I titled the show Process um, because I, I really discovered a very new process this past winter in how I paint. Um, those of you who've been following me for a longer time can hopefully see that evident. Um, and it, it's one of those questions that people always ask an artist. In fact, it was interesting. I was watching a TV show last night and they were like in this art gallery and somebody goes up to the artist and goes, what's your process? I went, oh, there it is. <laughs> And I've never had an answer to it because my painting was something I did more just, you know, I copied photographs or I went out and painted plein air or something I saw, but it really didn't, it didn't feel like I had a story to tell about it or how it was happening. Um, and in fact, any of you, there was a gentleman here earlier who had read my novel, my, my, my closeted now novel from several years ago that, um, the uh, main character actually is an artist and kind of pokes fun at people who see paintings and look for all these deep hidden meanings in them because I was just painting pretty pictures. Um, one of my struggles too has been for a very long time, I painted since I was 13 years old and trying to embrace it to potentially be livelihood but feeling like I want the work that I do to have some other sort of meaning in the world. Um, so that's part of the process as well. Um, some of you know me from Christ Lutheran Church, some of you know me from Cape Cod Church, some of you have just met me walking in off the street and don't know anything about me, but my life itself the past several years has really been a process of change um, significantly. Um, God always was a very important thing in my life, but I, and I, I know that you all don't, aren't on the same page with this, so just roll with it and, and um, I'll just beg of you to allow me to speak my what's in my heart, but um, I really developed on a very different level um, personal relationship with Jesus Christ in the last four years. And it's colored how I do everything. It's meant letting go of a lot of things in my life. It's meant taking on some new things. It's meant changing how I approach things. It's meant a difference in my painting. And if you read the press release, um, I realized I need to rewrite it because it sounds a little bit like a parlor, or like a or like trick or whatever they call that, and it's not meant to be, but I started just allowing prayer to be a much deeper part of guiding how I painted. Um, the abstract started quite happenstance at the beginning of this last October that I was working on, is it, it's the, I think it's the first piece on the left side as you go down the hallway. Um, it was actually a painting of Truro Dunes and I was trying to liven it up a little bit because I was bored with it. And it was about midnight and I just got really angry with it because it was, as a friend of his, Julia O'Malley Keys always says, is a painting behaving badly? <laughs> and so I took this, but it wasn't actually this knife. I didn't have one of these at that time. I took a palette knife and I just started smearing the painting around on it because I just didn't like it. And then I looked at it the next morning and I went, well, that's kind of cool. <laughs> and I don't know anything about abstract don't know what's good, don't know what's bad, I just know what comes from my heart. So I decided I was going to just play for a while this past winter and let the paintings go where they wanted to go. And to um, use it as, you know, it's instead of having music on or having videos playing or whatever, to just allow it to be a quiet time and to really go a bit deeper and to, to ask for guidance. You know, people talk about artists having a muse. Well, my muse is the Holy Spirit. So it makes me a little bit different. Um, that piece in the back corner um, was one of the first ones. It was not actually palette knife, but it was also back in October. I had a sky already painted on there. 
put it on the, on the easel and very intentionally as an experiment, just sat up close to it with a big thick bristle brush and no source photo, I always work from source photos, no source photo, and just started dabbing at the paint and just kind of in this, just trying to listen and just kind of going where it felt like it wanted to go. And again, I don't mean that as like some ogre boga trick. It's not at all. It's, it's much more precious and, and important than that. And then I stepped back from it and said, well, that's kind of fun. Um, and the fun thing with that piece is, so what do you all see in that one? Like, do you see something? Because there was no source photo. There was nothing driving it or directing it. Um, yes. I've had people say dunes. Um, I've had people say a wave breaking. Um, to me, it's New Hampshire mountains. Um, but anyway, so so somebody asked, you asked about the variety of the um, pieces that are very abstract and then the pieces that are more realistic and which happened first. So in January and February, I pretty much did only abstracts. And this became my tool. This is a palette mm -hmm. painting knife. Um, almost everything in here is painted with just this one tool. Um, which is kind of fun, because you don't have to clean brushes. <laughs> so, you're done. Um, I have refined my palette that I'm using about five different tubes of paint, and I, my greens are all mixed now. I don't use green on the tube. Um, and so the abstracts really just are really a hoot to do, because I'll paint some, and then I'll put it aside and let it dry, and then you come back, and it's an adventure, because I never know when I have like if I go back into something with some white on here, like to this one, and I start moving over it, because there's texture to it, it sort of grabs at the palette knife. So you, it's not this tight controlled thing that I used to paint. It's more just allowing it to grab the paint and see where it goes. Um, so that's how the abstracts happen. And then um, probably around the 1st of March, as the pressure started to mount for the show, decided let's take the abstract process and let's apply that to doing more realistic things, but again without using source photos. Either out of my head, sitting at, several of the little ones um, were done in the front seat of my car at Chappie Beach, um, but also still using a palette knife and allowing that abstract experience to sort of inform it. Um, so that's the, that's the creative process. Um, and you know, the, the faith component, I just, the thing that's just so joyful to me is that there is opportunity, as I talk about the artistic process, to also talk about my faith journey. And I just want to share something kind of amazing that showed up this morning, because you can't make this stuff. Jane's my official holder of things. So, so I, I usually start my morning with reading a little bit of scripture. And this morning got up and, you know, had to get all the food ready and had, you know, Lutheran church and then Cape Cod church and then had to be here and it was just like a crazy day. And I was sitting at my computer waiting to print out something and watching the little spinning wheel because my computers are all getting old and too overburdened with too many images. And I was like, okay, I didn't read script yet. Okay, take this minute, just find something. And I looked up and I have a shelf over my um, computer that just has some like older Bibles. They aren't the ones that I use for study. This was one that was given to me, turns out, I, I think when I was confirmed in the Lutheran Church when I was 14 years old. And it was back in the day when, you know, a lot of people think a Bible is like something you put and you don't, it's very precious. And, you know, you don't do the thing that most of us do now where they're dog-eared and you're underlined and you're highlighted and you write in them and all that. So this was my, my fancy Bible. So I picked it up. And I thought, I think this came from my grandmother, but I'm not sure. And so I opened up to, I'm sure I can't even say this without crying, I opened up to the open page on it. And the date on the bottom is June 2nd, 1974. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and I just went, wow. And then I went to the calculator, how many years? 45 years ago, which I think probably was the day I was confirmed. And then the other thing that was added even on to it is there was a little slip of paper in here, just kind of random. It's an old business card with Mimi's art from a different incarnation. It has Jeremiah 29, 11 to 14. And it's one that's often misquoted and misused and 
whatnot, but it's the, basically it's the one that says God has a plan for your life. Mm -hmm. And that's what appeared in my hands this morning. Mm -hmm. So um, that was cry number one. <laughs> <laughs> there have been many today, but they're cries of just awe. And um, I, I really I appreciate all of the praise that you've given me. I appreciate all the kind words and your wonderful welcome to the paintings. And Peter, my publicist, who <laughs> joking to refer to that. Peter Laird, who led a small group together last summer, and he sent me an email. He goes, I hope it's okay. I sent this to a whole bunch of friends. Please, share the word. It's great. But, um, but I only take part of the glory because it really has become um, my painting time is now very precious time. It's prayer time, it's connection with spirit, it's, um, it's a chance to have my work speak of God's majesty, not my own. And so that's my talk. If you have any, I'd be happy to, a lot of you have been asking me questions about the process, if any of you have any questions. But thank you so much for being here. It's, um, it's been a wild eight months. Um, I have a business meeting tomorrow and run for God tomorrow night, but tomorrow afternoon I'm sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but thank you very, very much for being here. Amy, I yes, ask a question. You have numbers for all your work. Uh, thank you. You use numbers on the work, but do you? in your memory have a name for it? So <coughs> where it was, how you felt, who you were thinking about? Um, some of the paintings have names, but what happened was, you know, you had to create all the paintings and then I had to wire them all and then I had to catalog them and then I had to price them all and meanwhile I'm still working three or four other jobs at the same time and I just didn't have it in me to name 50 paintings. Some of them have names, but what I did was I thought, well, let's just kind of play. And I don't know if any of you have played, but there are index cards in a fishbowl. And I'd be intrigued to have you all help name them. Mm -hmm. um, there are a couple that have names, but not a whole lot of them. Maybe would you talk about one? Like the, the ones one in behind here. you? Um, the one, that one doesn't have a name. No, the one behind you, your head. Would you talk about something like that? It doesn't have a name. Would you talk about it? Yeah. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I just want to hear your answer. So, do you so remember, that was, do you remember painting it? And well, what so was going through your I mind do a little bit. It, it wasn't so much what was going through my mind. One of the things I also did this winter as part of this process was as I was defined as I was refining down to just these sort of five or six main paint tubes that I, you know, cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, white, uh, burnt umber, cadmium yellow, cadmium red. I'm missing one, but I think that's it. I have probably a hundred other old paint tubes, and you know they get dried up and it's hard to get out of them. So one of the things that the app, some of the abstracts were, were just taking some of these old paint tubes, because I won't throw out anything, slicing them open with an exacto knife and just scraping the paint out and playing around with the abstract with it. I think that's what this one started as, mm -hmm. but um, I couldn't tell you which one. How different they um, look at a distance than how close. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the koi pond one, that's how, oh, that's one of the ones that has a name. The orange and black one, orange and black and white. Um, you were, the shards were part of that. I took that over to the, the little Bible study we had and, and Susan goes, it looks like my koi pond. And I went, okay, that one's been named. Um, um, there's one, the first one on the left side as you go down the short hallway at the end of the hallway, that's sort of a blue and white heart. That one's called accidental heart because it, didn't start out to be a heart, it just ended up one and it actually hung in my bedroom for a couple months. Um, Thank you. Can I help you? Mm -hmm. One more question. Yeah. Uh, that I have. Yeah. Uh, the texture in the, um, the piece right opposite me, how did you get that texture? I mean, that is so special. It's because it took many, many, many layers of painting to get that to a place where I was ready to show it. Um, that was actually originally, if, if you all remember when I had the gallery next to Chapco Grill, mm -hmm. I did a series of very minimalist skies over the water. Never sold any, they didn't really go anywhere. And that was one, it was called Long Line, and it was just this long sky over the water. And so it went back to the easel, and, um, and I started just playing around with it. It actually started as a vertical, now that I'm remembering, it started as a vertical, and there was kind of a tree, it's like that. <laughs> and you just turn it around and it just, the texture happened because it was just layer upon layer of going back to it, 
trying to get it to a place where I was finally okay with showing it. Um, so that's why it has that good flag stain. Yeah, yeah, the acrylic or oil? Oh, they're all oil. They're yeah, all oil. They um, let's see what else to tell you about them. All of the seascapes, anything that has a horizon line of water, there's at least one little tiny sailboat in the distance. Mm -hmm. And that was really a sort of hats off to me. Homage, is that the right word? I keep using that word, but I'm not, if I'm using it right, to my mother. Because when we were coming up here in the late 60s and the 70s, she took so many pictures of sunsets over the water and that we used to give her a rough time because that was back in the day of slides. <laughs> We're all slides. But I remember she used to always say, and there's always that one little sailboat anytime she took a picture for a yeah, mm -hmm. sunset. So every one of those has, you have to, sometimes they're tiny. And one little using the tip of the jean. <laughs> um, somebody asked about, do you have a tiny knife? And I said, no, but this has a very sharp little point. So you can take a little bit of light and just kind of Thank you. I'll pay you extra. Advantage. <laughs> it's very light. Uh, what else do I want to share with you? Make sure, so a couple of things before you leave. Um, there is a guest book. Please do sign, um, just so I can keep track of who all was here. I love to be able to go back and look. Um, this white piece of foam board I put out just, if you, like, I want to hear your reactions to the pieces. So whatever emotions, thoughts, words you want to share, pop them on that board. Um, the White Indians cards are out there. You're welcome to suggest names to any of the paintings that you want to. Um, and there are also, because every fun party has a goodie bag that goes home with it, so there are um, little business card magnets that are all basically this postcard that I cut down and some are the abstract sky and some are seascapes. So you can pick whichever one you want. Um, but please do take a magnet home with you if you'd like. And just stay and enjoy. We're here. We've got the room till 5 o'clock. And um, thanks for listening to me, and just keep the feedback because I thank you, Martha. Thank you.